Hey everybody, Seth with Everyman Prepping here. Thank you for joining me today, and we're going to get into the stories in a minute about uh, the drone attack on Russia, the border invasion from Ukraine into Russia, all that, some stuff about Israel, United States finding some money under the coffee table and some weapons to give Ukraine, all that. Uh, we're going to get into that, but I got to talk about this other story first. It's about Haiti. I'm not sure you know what's going on there, but uh, wait to see what the Department of Defense is saying today about it and the craziness that might be coming to the United States. So let's go ahead and get into that really quick here. As you can see here, we have... Department of Defense officials say that they've been alerted about a potential maritime mass migration from Haiti into the United States. So in the last few days, I don't know if you realize, but Haiti has become a failed state. Prime Minister is you know, evacuated. I think it might be the United States by now. He's gone. Uh, gangs are running the country. It's running wild. There's, you know, they've emptied all the prisons of you know, gangs and all kinds of stuff. You know, there's fires, looting, you name it. Haiti is just an uncontrolled uh, country right now. It, you know, there, there's, it's a failed state at this point, basically. And now they're saying, well, they're going to be headed here. And what's worse upon that, this is how ridiculous and horrible the situation is. There are cannibal gangs taking over Haiti right now. And you would think this is just, you know, a joke, whatever, you know, it can't be possible these day and age, but I kid you not, literally, I was, you're not going to see these videos on YouTube here. You're going to see them on like Telegram or Reddit or something, but I watched a video, There's a, they're interviewing this guy, and they called him the barbecue gang leader, something like that. It's, I know it's ridiculous to even say that, but he's gnawing on something, he's chewing on something, they're interviewing, there's a fire in the background, mass chaos you know, going on, riots, everything behind him. And then he reaches down, the camera pans down, and there's an individual on fire, and he grabs a chunk of the said person's leg, puts his mouth, and starts chewing, and acting like it's no big deal, and it's the greatest thing. It's totally out of this world. You think you're watching some horrible purge movie or something, which people in, in Pittsburgh, uh, you know, the purge is on between 3 and 7 a.m. Uh, in the mornings there since there's no more police coming in. So good luck to everybody in Pittsburgh uh, since, you know, basically the purge has started. But I have digress. Let's go back. This gentleman, like I said, cannibalism full on. And we have here that, you know, mass migration might be coming to the United States. So, you know, uh, I, if they're coming in, what's up? Probably Florida, I don't know, like Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama. I don't know where they're going to end up, but if you live in those states, make sure you're ready. Make sure you're ready when those bo boats land on your sandy shores because, you know, probably mixed in with all these people are going to be some of the, well, cannibal gangs and who knows what else. And, you know, the United States, when they say that, you know, they've been alerted to it, means they're probably welcoming it and they might be even ferrying these people here. So get ready in the South because. The failed state of Haiti is going to send all their now newly released gang members and who knows what else to our shores. So just found this out. Ridiculous. You know, this is going on, but that's the state of the world right now. So get ready down there because it's going to be on soon. Now let's go to this. So what I want to talk about, Ukraine, last night, largest drone attack. I'll even put this up so we can watch this while I talk really quick. There we go. This is an oil refinery, one of the largest oil refineries in Russia that was hit. Uh, but they did the largest drone attack. We're going to go through an article that talks about where they hit and how many uh, into Russia, seven different regions. And then they had border incursions. They tried to invade Russia, basically. Uh, you know, was it, so, was it Ukrainian troops? Was it three-letter organization, U.S., Western, NATO-supported troops? Doesn't matter, it's all supported by the West, but they tried to go through the Belgorod region and a few others and do an attack into Russia. Makes zero sense, right? Uh, you know, Russia's making ground in the south of Ukraine. They've taken over large portions. Ukraine can't even kick them out of there, but yet Ukraine is sending send all the drones. That, you know, I don't know if Zelensky has said, send them all. You know, 30 drones going into different regions of Russia. And by the way, let's try to invade Russia. Why not? Total waste of manpower, money, machinery, all that. No idea what they're trying to get out of this. Uh, if you have an idea what you think the purpose behind this is, as we go through these articles, I'd love to hear your opinions below. Write them in the comments. While you're doing that, hit that like, subscribe button, share the video, all that great stuff. I really appreciate it. But let's go back into here. I'm going to shrink this down so we can read. And you can see here this um, person who she's, you know, presents herself as the disinformation of Russian uh, media for uh, Ukraine, but anyway, you know, drones uh, attacked Moscow, Tula, Nevins, Novogard, Belgorod, Kursk, Oriel, Vanas, 
targeting infrastructure like the Luke Oil Refinery in Novogard, Novgorod, I should say, and the oil storage facility in Orel. Um, so yeah, they, and the couple got through obviously because you know you see a fire burning there. So large scale attack, it did go through. Let's read a little bit more about it. Yes, this is TASS. It's like reading CNN for the United States, but they actually did a halfway decent job of rolling up what the attack was like. So you have uh, Russia's air defense intercepted and destroyed over 30 Ukrainian, um, basically, you know, drones flying overhead. They also intercepted eight rockets in the Belgorod re region. Uh, this says the massive drone attack caused fires at the facilities in the uh, Nizhny, uh, Novogorod, and Oryol regions. Basically, you know, they, they admit those, you know, they got through and hit some of their oil refineries. It said the seven regions were attacked, and I just read them all off to you before. I'm not going to read them again. But they confirmed that those, I mean, from Moscow down to Belgorod in the south, huge range of attack on, is what was conducted. Did they get much out of it? Eh, you know, uh, some pestering, yeah, oil refinery. People are saying, well, you take the oil. I'm going to get to the last, I thought I had another statement on here. I guess not. They, um, people are saying that, you know, if you take the oil away from uh, Russia, Russia ends because that's where they're making all the money and it's going to China and it cuts off China. And that's what they're doing. I don't know about that, but let's get into the incursion that happened, you know, or the invasion, the invasion of Russia, basically. And this top headline we're going to talk about in a minute, another giant plane in Russia went down. But the Russian Minister of Defense reveals that the details of the Ukrainian incursion attempts. Attacks on the Belgorod and Kursk regions have been repelled with heavy losses for Kiev forces. Now, this is RT. It's like MSNBC, but... Uh, you know, we got to get, you know, I like to give their point of view what's going on too. You know, they're going to say they repelled everything. They killed all the Ukrainians. I'm not, I don't even want to get into what side won or not. I'm just getting into what, what happened and why did it happen? Why did they even attempt this? But you can see here that the Ukrainian military supported by tanks, armored combat vehicles, uh, attacked the Belgorod region simultaneously from three directions at around 3 a.m. Uh, then they're going through, they killed at least 60 servicemen. They killed the five, you know, blew up five tanks and so forth. It's been going on since March 10th, these incursions. Like I said, they're, they're, you're not invading Russia with you know, this few people. You're, I mean, yeah, you're, it's, it's, it's like you're just poking an animal. I mean, it, what's it going to do? It's like, you know, I, I, I don't understand the, the reasoning behind this. And then what's worse about, you know, not understanding that is Putin's response. He's just sitting there and taking it. Let's look at this last Russian story. It's the military transport plane crashes in Russia. One of these giant planes crashed. It said it had um, air. Um, here you can see it up here. We'll play the video really quick. And can't turn the sound off for you there, but you see someone explain. But caught, you know, engine caught fire and down it goes. So, um, you know, was that sabotage? Was it just an accident? I don't know. But um, another giant transport plane, you know, down for Russia. Well, let's get back to what, you know, I was talking about earlier, and that's Putin. You know, all kinds of red lines have been crossed by, you know, Ukraine. Whether it be blowing up the dam, you know, hitting in Kherson, you know, all, all these lines, you know, drones into their state, now an incursion, all this stuff. And Putin just sits there and, they, and they're patient and they sit there waiting. I'm waiting for him to crack. When is he going to crack? Is it maybe after the elections that, that start on the 15th and go through the 17th until he cements himself in as the president again of Russia? But... I mean, imagine if it, you know, the U.S. was having a spat with Mexico over California or Texas or something, and you know, or, or United States wanted a buffer zone from the cartel, so they went into you know Mexico and they took some land as a buffer zone, Tijuana and all that, uh, you know, to keep the cartels and keep you know immigration out. Who knows? Uh, and then you know, Mexico started lobbing drones, attacking you know Dallas and L.A. and other cities, and then they started you know trying to have little incursions across the border. You would hope the United States would, you know, come back strong with their shock and awe or something and pummel Mexico so they never did it again. They would never even think about doing it again. They would just stop. Why hasn't Russia done that? You know, is it because they were trying to protect Ukraine because when they want to take it over, they don't want a destroyed country? I don't know. But, I, you know, I, I got a feeling eventually Putin's going to snap. He's going he's gonna, to, you know, snap and say that's it. Release it all. We're doing it all. We're going, you know, all, you know, full... Russian shock and awe, conventional, level Kiev, whatever it takes. Iskander missiles everywhere. You know, we're going to make 
you know, basically Ukraine kneel, make NATO kneel down, and we're, you know, going to take all the land we want, and then, you know, they're going to have to surrender. You know, or does he snap so far as to launch a tactical nuke and say, we're going to launch one, you can see what we can do, and you better stop, or we're launching more. I don't know. I think it's going to happen because how long can you take just things happening inside your country, you know, if you're Putin, attacks inside your country, drones and all that, and sit there and just do nothing except your, your attacks in Ukraine? doesn't make any sense. Not getting the strategy. If you have an idea of what strategy they're using, what you think, I'd just like to present this information and see what you guys have to think. Like, address it in the comments below. All right, so let's go on to some other stories now, and we're getting into this here. You see here that the Pentagon, they found some weapons, you know, $300 million worth to send to Ukraine. You know, I thought they were out of money, but also we found some weapons. We're going to find, you know, how they came about this. But it says here, even though the Pentagon lacks the funds to replenish our stockpile, you know, I don't think they're worried about that. If you're China, you got to be loving this. You're like, yeah, keep sending your stuff. Keep sending all your weapons and everything over there because when we hit Taiwan, you're not going to have anything left to stop us. You know, this is great. You know, Iran's probably thinking the same thing. You know, waste it all in Ukraine. So when we, you know, when we help, you know, uh, Lebanon against Israel or attack Israel itself, you can't help us either. We're going to get into a little bit of Israel and what they're doing in a minute here, but... So we've 300 million more going. And what's it say here? It says the Pentagon will rush about 300 million in weapons to Ukraine after finding some cost savings in its contracts, even though the military remains deeply overdrawn and needs about 10 billion, B, that's with a B, 10 billion to replenish all the weapons it's pulled from current stockpiles. So we need 10 billion to rebuild. I mean, the money's not going to do it. You just, it takes time, materials uh, to produce all the stuff that we've given away. You know, you can give them 10, you know, the, the Fed could print $10 billion right now and give it to the Pentagon. Doesn't mean we have the weapons to fight a war, but I don't even think they're thinking about that. So uh, they did some cost savings and contracts. Yeah, okay, that, you know, that's like you have a, you know, a druggie who, you know, is trying to find money to buy more drugs and, you know, give his drugs out. And, you know, some ask him, where you get that money? Where'd you? Oh, I found it in the couch, or, you know, or something. You know, I, 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 you know, did some extra work on the side. In fact, he just stole the money from his mom's purse or something. So, you know, the Pentagon basically found, you know, found some money. You know, they, they, they've cost savings and uh, thus they can give them 300 million more in weapons. And it says here that they're going to give them the ATACMs uh, over there. In fact, here's a little diagram I got for you. So the Lockheed Martin ATACMs, they're going to send them some more of these. They're going to put them in the, they said they're going to put them in the uh, cluster munition model that they have, which is these two here. Standard warhead just hits the ground and explodes. Cluster munition explodes above ground and shoots down little bomblets all over. So um, you know, this is what they're looking to send them over to you know Ukraine as part of the deal. There's going to be a bunch of artillery and other stuff. And it says, uh, as a quote here from Jake Sullivan, from National Security Advisor, when Russian troops advance and its guns fire, Ukraine does not have enough ammunition to fire back. Well, if they're down to that, if that's if it's that bad, maybe Ukraine needs to start thinking about, well, maybe we need to, you know, have some peace talks and negotiations and, you know, settle on uh, how Russia's not just going to totally destroy all of Ukraine, if, if that's the state they're at right now. So that's one thing they put out. And then what else do we have? We have this here. The Pentagon is seeking to replace the old systems, which is these ATACMs, um, with the upcoming Precision Strike Missile. I've mentioned this before. It's the PRSM. Uh, and the Army is buying it to replace the ATACM system. So it's online now. They have it. And yeah, they need the $10 billion to help produce a whole bunch more of those. So the United States is getting weaker. Giving them more stock and supplies. China's loving it. Iran's loving it. Heck, Russia's even loving it at this point. And it's just going to get wasted over there. And they're probably going to do, you know, wasted on stupid incursions against Russia. Or blasting. I don't know what they're going to do, but... This is nothing. This is just part of the, the money laundering machine going on over there. So that's what I have. That's all I have for that. Let's move over to Israel really quick before we end this here. It's been going on for a little while here. Israel making plans to launch an invasion of southern Lebanon. Been talking about this. A lot of people have. Yes, it's going to happen. Um, let's just read it. You know, this is the update on it. Today coming oh, well, yesterday looks like. It says, Israel is continuing signaling that it's preparing to launch a major new operation against Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. I think Lebanon launched a ton of rockets last night again. It's not going to be an easy task. I think they think it's going to be, but I think Israel is going to be in for something worse than what happened in 2006. Uh, anyway, it says some 80,000 Israeli residents uh, whose homes are near the border have been evacuated since last October and November, and they haven't been 
they haven't gone back because they're worried about getting attacked from you know, Hezbollah and Lebanon. They want to you know change that, I guess. So anyway, it's called Operation Steady Anchor. It aims to protect civilians during the expected escalation of fighting. Hezbollah is estimated to have 150,000 rockets. A lot of them get, that can reach Haifa, which we know they can because they've already attacked Haifa, and Tel Aviv. They haven't reached Tel Aviv yet, but I imagine they can. So 150,000 rockets, that's a, that's a lot of firepower. And it says the IDF has been conducting a logistics supply drill focused on its northern bases and positions in preparations for a Lebanon offensive. This has included practice runs delivering ammo, equipment, water, fuel, and simulated maneuvering forces operating in southern Lebanon. Remember, Russia did the same thing in Belarus and on the border of Ukraine before they went in. They just said, we're just practicing this, just drills. Israel doing this, they're probably going to go in. And then we're going to see that Middle East really kick off into uh, another level. You know, you'll see the Yemenis really kick it up in the Red Sea. You might see Iran get more involved. So that's coming. The, the, the invasion of Lebanon will happen. Will the U.S. have to get involved? If Lebanon still really starts handing it to Israel, yes, they will. Um, so they'll be, you know, sending weapons to Ukraine, helping out in, in you know, Israel and Lebanon. And then, you know, why not just start the China thing going and I found this, finally, I want to end with this. I've been saying, what is this floating port going to look like they're going to put in Gaza? Which, once again, makes no sense because you could just truck stuff into Gaza. I don't know why we need a port. It seems like we're just building a giant target. This isn't it. This is an example. But you can see what it would, you know, might look like. The, the, the ship's already left Virginia. They're on the way there. But you can see it's basically a floating port. They're going to dock it next to the shore. And so they say there's no boots on the ground. But... There basically is. The U.S. service people are going to be on this port. It's basically attached to the sandy beach. And so they basically are on the ground. It's going to be a huge target. It's going to want to be attacked and destroyed by Hamas, Iran, Hezbollah, somebody. Um, and maybe that's the tripwire. You're saying, well, we're going to build this so they have something to focus on. So when they do attack it, then we can really go in and, you know, uh, you know the American people will be behind us. So... That's what I have for you today on the updates. Um, once again, if you're in the South, you're in you know, the Florida, let's let's keep an eye on this close to home uh, going on with Haiti. If the you know boats, you know, if the big boats start showing up, landing on the shores, people piling out of them, gonna have to wonder, you know, a are the you know is the United States just gonna let them roam free? Is the Border Patrol gonna do something with them? The Coast Guard are they gonna stop them, or are we best to just let these people come in unvetted? Uh, unchecked and you know who knows if they're all just prisoners from haiti so just be careful in the south make sure you have your defensive tools whatever they may be the legal ones you're allowed to have and everything you're trained up you're ready to go you got your supplies if you want to hunker down in your house anything like that because not only you have to worry about that we've got you know the whole russian windows putin you know finally crack and decide you know to push the button and then we go to a higher level so we'll keep our eye on the russian elections and I'll let you know what, uh, you know, we find out from them. There's actually, there's no thought that, you know, Putin won't get reelected. But like I said, that starts March 15th, the Ides of March, all that great stuff. Everything lining up, numbers, numerology, calendars, all that great stuff. And like we've talked about before, you know, April's another good time for China if they want to do something in Taiwan because uh, the seas are calmer, the oceans are a little more favorable to, you know, landing craft at, the weather's a little better. Uh, will they do some? Who knows? But that's another time frame. And China's been kind of quiet. Yeah, they still have flying incursions in, but they have you know a low number of planes, you know, below uh, double digits number of planes or ships going into Taiwan zone. Uh, so uh, you know, whenever they quiet down, a lot of people say, "Oh, good, they're you know they're behaving." And you know, they pull back. I I on the other hand get a little nervous, concerned inside, thinking, "Well, something's gonna be coming because it's quiet down." Anyway, that's all I have for you. Hope you enjoy this. Hope you got something out of it. Until next time, keep your ear to the ground and head on a swivel.